everyone. We're going to be working on a half cartoon, half photograph face today. And to do this, we're going to be using Photoshop. Um, you can actually use any photo program you want. There's a lot of free ones online. Um, you just want to make sure that it has the ability to do layers. Make sure there's a part where it lets you add layers. Um, that's an important part of working on this. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do, guys, is make a folder on our desktop where we can store all of our information, your personal information on this particular laptop. So you're going to do the double click, so two fingers clicking at the same time, and you're going to go down to the word new and then folder. Make sure you're on the desktop when you do this. And then you're going to title it. I would say put your name and period on there. And I think that's plenty good enough. So that way, if anyone else is using it from another class period, they know not to touch this because this is your name and your class period. First thing you're going to want to do is go to your Google Drive where you have saved your um, photo that we're going to be using for this project. So I have mine saved in my drive, our portfolio, and I have it under seventh grade, just like you should have. Um, you're going to find your photo in there. And the next thing we have to do is save it to the computer that you're working on. So we're going to right click or double click, you know, two fingers at the same time. And you're going to go down to where it says download because we want it on this computer so you can access it. So I'm going to press download. And you're going to see a pop up here in the bottom left hand corner. You could click on it, but we're actually going to press this up arrow here, and that's going to allow you to have the option of where to find it. So I'm going to click on Show in Folder, and here it is in the download file. Now, we don't want to leave it here. We're actually going to take this picture, and we're going to stick it in our folder that we just made on our desktop. So I'm going to just minimize this in the background, and I'm just going to pull this around. And you can either um, use the two finger click to pull up options and you can press cut and then paste it or you can just open up your folder on your desktop and drag it over. So I'll show you both. So cut, minimize, open up my name period one and then I can use my two finger click to paste it. That's one option. Um, the other option would have been to take this and drag it over have both windows open at the same time and just drag it over that also will work just fine. And then uh, we need to get our canvas started. So you're going to go up to File under Photoshop, and we're going to click New. Under New, it has the, usually its default is Custom. And over here on the right-hand side, you're going to see something that says Orientation, and it's highlighted already on the portrait. So the up and down view. Now, if your photograph that you are using is in this direction, this vertical portrait direction, you can leave it as is and press create. If it needs to be horizontal, because maybe your picture is a side-by-side -side horizontal view, you're going to click this icon and then click create. So choose which one is going to work for you and click create. And you have a nice white rectangle, either vertical or horizontal, depending on which you picked. I want to make sure that I have this folder open at the same time as I have my Photoshop open. I'm just going to click my photo and drag it over. And now it's here in my white space. Now you'll notice there's some extra gaps around, right? That extra bit of white. We want to get rid of that. We want to enlarge our photo so it fills it up. And you can actually make your photo as big or as small as you want to. Now here's something you have to really be careful of. Um, if I just click on the corner and start dragging it, you're going to see that it's just going to start moving all over the place. It might get really squished, it might get really skinny. It's going to be all kind of warped and not exactly the way you want it. So to prevent that from happening, instead what you're going to do is make sure you press the shift key. So I'm going to press the shift key on my left hand side of my computer or right hand side and I'm going to click and drag and now it can only go up or down and it'll stay in proportion. So I'm not going to get it too fat, too skinny, too anything. And you can make it as big or as small as you want, as I said, and think about where you want it to be placed. If you want your face right in the center, if you want to be a little lower in the corner, think about the compositional aspects of that. And once you've decided where you're going to go and how big you're going to be, right up here at the top, there is a cancel sign. If you want to like cancel it and start all over, that would be a great thing to do if you messed up and you forgot to press the shift key. Um, or you can press the check mark, which lets the program know that you are all set and that's exactly how you want it.
All right, now we have our photo ready to go. We're ready to start adding some layers. We're gonna be doing some different layers on top of this that we're gonna be drawing on. So I don't wanna mess up this photo in case I wanna use it again or do something with it. I don't wanna ruin anything um, with it. So what I'm gonna do is up here at the top where it says layer, I'm gonna click layer, click new layer. And it's going to give me the option of naming my layer. I'm going to label it outline. So over here you can see all your layers on the right hand side. So we have at the bottom um, we have the white background, then we have a picture of ourself, and then we have the, la the layer that's labeled outline. Now whatever layer is on top, that's what you're going to see on top. Whatever layer is on bottom, that's what's going to be on the bottom. So think of it kind of like doing a collage. You have your background, you have images, and you have other things on top of it. So before we do our outline layer, we're actually going to click the self one. So make sure you click one that is a photo of you. And we're going to try to change the opacity. The opacity means how saturated and how much you can see your photo. So I'm going to go right up here. So you can look right above where your photo is. It says opacity, and right now it's 100% because it's just fully the picture. What I'm gonna do is slide this down a little bit and you can see the photo is changing. Do you see how the photo is getting lighter and lighter and more dull? If I go really far, it's gonna give me really light. We don't wanna go that light. We just want it to be a little bit lighter so we can kind of get rid of some distractions and really focus on um, some basic details. So I'm gonna do about like halfway you know, like 50%. And now I'm gonna go back and click the outline layer again. And now we're ready to start drawing on our face. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a line to divide our face. So remember, this is what we want it to look like. We're gonna have half of a real photo and half of a cartoon version of ourselves. And we're gonna draw a line to divide it. It could be any shape line you want. So I have this kind of funny S curve, wavy line. Maybe you want a zigzag, maybe you want a straight line. Maybe you want just one curve. You have to think about what you want. Over here on the left-hand side, we're gonna click the brush tool. So right here, you can hover over it and it'll tell you what it is, brush. I'm gonna click on it. And this is gonna allow me to draw with either my mouse, so I can draw with it like that. I can also edit and undo it. Or if you have a pen, a smart pen that allows you to mark on your computer, which we do for these particular laptops, um, you can use that as well. Now, you can do a sample draw like that and see what shape and what thickness the line is. Remember to always go up to edit, undo brush, tool if you want to get rid of it, or you can press Control Z. So I've drawn a line, I can press Control Z and it'll undo it as well. But over here on the right hand side, you're going to see something that says brush settings. Remember, whenever you're not sure what it is, just hover your cursor right over it and it'll tell you what it is. So I'm going to click brush settings. And right here it has all different types of brushes. I'm going to stick with the second one over because it's just going to be a nice, thick, solid line. These other ones are going to create some interesting shapes. Feel free to play around with them, but for what we're doing today, you're going to want something that's solid and easy to see for our outlining. Then down below is a size button. I can press it far and it'll get really thick and I can have it be really, really teeny tiny, skinny, and anywhere in between. So um, I can pick some level of thickness, test it out. And if I think it's too thick, I can just make it a little bit smaller. So keep playing with it until you get a nice thickness that you want. And typically the default is either white or black. So over here, you're gonna see, I'm gonna get rid of that. Over here, you can see color. And there's all these different colors within the spectrum. You can pick any color you want. For our outlining, I do recommend sticking with something neutral, like a black or a white. So if you go way to the top of the corner, it's gonna, you can click on the white space and you'll see the color right there show up as a white. So when I draw, it will be all white. Or you can click all the way at the bottom of the color spectrum and you're gonna get a nice black and you can get a nice black shape. All right, so I have my black and I have my line size ready to go. I'm gonna draw a line to divide my face. So again, feel free to erase this, redo it until you get it the shape you want. 
All right, so I have my line shape and I am ready to move on to my next part, which is going to be outlining my face. So to start outlining, I'm going to want to zoom in a little bit. I'm a little bit far away from what I'm looking at. And if I try to outline from this distance, it's going to be a little hard to see. So I'm going to go all the way almost to the very bottom where I see a magnifying glass and it says zoom tool. I'm going to click on that. And up here in the upper left-hand corner, you're going to see where there's a plus sign that's going to allow you to zoom in and a minus sign, which allows you to zoom out. So I'm going to press the plus sign and I'm going to click so I can zoom in as far as I want to, you can keep, and you can zoom back out if it's too close. And then right above the magnifying glass, there is a hand. That is a move tool. So I'm gonna click on that hand and I'm gonna, it's gonna allow me to click and drag and move around. I think I'm gonna do this side of the photo, the right side as my cartoon. So I'm gonna click back to my brush tool. And I think I might change the size of it a little bit. I think I wanna go just a little bit smaller. We're just going to spend some time outlining as much detail as we can. It takes a little practice to figure out the pressure. So if you need to practice a little bit with this, don't worry about it. And what's cool is if you're using a pen tool, you can actually um, see that the quality of the line changes a little bit if you are pressing hard or pressing light. So I'm going to speed up this a little bit just to get through it quicker, but um, just so you know, I am focusing on outlining every detail that I can using expressive lines to show that my hair is kind of flowing in different directions, outlining my clothes and other details like that. Um, if you make any big mistakes, you can always remember to press Control Z to um, take back the last line you did, but you can also use the eraser button tool on the left hand side and you can use that as well if you need to erase bigger areas. Now right now I'm adjusting my line thickness so that it's a little bit thinner than I was using um, because the details around my eyes are quite small and I really wanted to make sure that I was getting those details in without it being too thick so definitely feel free to change the thickness of the line if you need to when you're doing those tinier smaller details. Okay, I have fully outlined my cartoon half and I also outlined a few features in the background. If you did not want to do that and you wanted to leave it just blank, that's totally fine also. But I kind of wanted it to match the other side that is already finished. And now I'm ready to move on to my coloring. Now before we do the coloring, I'm actually going to pause and show you how to save this because chances are you're going to have to do this more than one sitting. And I want to show you how to save your work so that you can come back to it and continue working without messing up any of your layers or anything like that. So you're going to go up to File, and then you're going to go down, scroll down to Save As, not just Save. Make sure you click Save As. And what it's going to do is give you a um, setting of, you get a chance to title it, and it tells you what type you can save it as. We're going to leave it whatever the default is, which usually is Photoshop, PSD, it has all these little letters and stuff. Um, the reason why I want to save it like that is um, if we have to exit out and come back to it later, we want to be able to access it exactly how it is right now. If I try to save it as something else, like let's say a picture, like a JPEG, we're used to seeing this at the end of our um, pictures on our computers, that is going to flatten everything and it's going to save it as a photo, which is not what I want. I want to be able to get back in and change layers and do things. So I want to leave it as the default, which is the first one, which is Photoshop. Go to your desktop, find your folder. So in my case, um, I just wrote name and period and I have the original photo, photo in there and this is where I'm going to save it. I'm going to title it um, Cartoon Face. And I'm just going to save it there. When this pops up, just press the OK button. That's fine. And now it's been saved. So if I were to exit out of this, next time I get onto this computer, I can go to my folder, name period right here. It'll, I find the file that says cartoon face. I'll double click on it. And it'll open me up right back to Photoshop. And here we have their photo exactly where I left off. And if you look over here, I still have all my layers all in order and I can still continue on doing what I need to do. All right, let's move on to color. So before we start coloring this, we want to do another layer. So go up to layer at the top, click new layer. We're going to title this one color. 
And what we're actually going to do, if you look over to the right hand side here where I'm hovering over the word color layer right now, I'm going to click and drag it down so that it's actually underneath the outline because I want the, la the layer with an outline to be on top. So when I color, I can, I'm not going to cover up my lines, so I'll still be able to see it. This part's a lot of fun. So we're going to be utilizing this color swatch area a whole lot plus your paintbrush. Click on paintbrush, and this time you might want more often to use a bigger brush so you get more surface area. So, again, don't forget where this size bar is, so you can change the size and kind of play around with it. Um, and your colors don't have to be natural, I could do totally funky, crazy colors if I want. Um, right now, it's in the blue spectrum, but if I wanted to switch that and go into magenta or green or anything else, I might think stick in this magenta area and click over here somewhere and just click a spot. Make sure you're definitely on the color layer when you do this. And um, I can take my um, mouse or I can take my pen and start filling in some areas. Just as before, if you are um, trying to get into finer detail areas, zoom in and also consider changing your brush size. Okay, I'm going to start zooming a little faster just to get this done, but um, you'll notice that I do um, zoom in a lot and move the picture around. I do change my brush size so that I can get into those finer details and get closer to the outline edge without actually going outside of it, hopefully. Um, again, use the eraser tool if you need to. What I'm doing right now is actually I'm switching my color and I'm using um, my pen tool to kind of brush in some um, details using a slightly different color so that it gives it a little bit more depth and a little bit more interest. Um, you can definitely do the same thing if you would like to do that as well. Also feel free to get a little fun and expressive. Like I gave myself pink hair and I'm giving myself sort of this turquoise skin tone, which can be a lot of fun as well. So you don't have to go natural. You can if you want to, if you want to try to match your skin tone or match it to a more realistic but cartoony version, that's totally fine. But I'm choosing to kind of go a little bit playful and a little bit expressive in this particular situation. decided to go with a slightly darker shade within the same color palette um, to create some shadow. So I thought about where the shadows would be on my normal face and neck area and I thought I would add that using um, my pen tool. I can adjust the pressure, how hard I press or how light I press. I can get some really nice cool different shaded effects. Um, again, if you don't like it, you can always cover it back up. And when I do my eyes, I really had to zoom in so I can get those details. I decided to do um, some shades of blue and again some highlights just to give it a little bit of a sense of realism but still has that fun cartoony feel to it. Once you're done with your cartoon face, as far as you go, um, you're going to move on to your background. Now, again, for your face, think about maybe playing around with shading. Um, if you have a pen, you can play around with the pressure of the pen and you can get lights and darks. And that's how I was able to create some shadows in my face. You can also play with different brushes off to the side. Um, as I showed you guys before, um, the second one over is generally the one that I recommend for drawing with because it's a really nice thick banded thing but there's also other um, different textures that you can play with and click and see what they do what kinds of different um, marks they make and in some of the cases like um, this particular first one you're going to get some softer sort of more blendable color so these might be really good choices if you're trying to blend color out a little bit 
Um, but now we're moving on to our background. So in order to do our background, we don't want to mess up any of the coloring we did just did. And so because of that, we're going to do another layer. So go up to layer, click on new. Um, and then we are going to title this one background. Press OK. And we're actually going to, again, slide this. If you look at where the background is, it's under the outline. That's where we want it to be, um, just like we did for color. But we actually want this one to be under color. So I'm going to lift it down and drag it under color. That way, when I color, it's not going to go on top of my color. It's going to be behind my colors. So on the side here, it should say outline, color, background color. I renamed it background color. I think that's a better choice. And uh, then picture of yourself, and then background. Make sure you've selected your background color layer so that you're on the right one and not something else that you're going to end up coloring over something you just did. And then select your brush tool and get to coloring your background. Um, you can choose anything that you want. Again, it can be realistic and it could like match the original side or it could be totally random and funky and fun, whatever you want, or a little bit of both. have pretty much all your colors blocked in whether or not you feel you're done with them it's a good idea to go back to your self layer so the layer on the side that is a picture of you or whoever else you're doing and bring back the opacity um, back up to 100 so I'm going up here where it says opacity and I'm going to slide the bar all the way up to 100 again this way I can see exactly how it's going to look side by side. I can also see if I missed something. I'm realizing I missed a little piece right here actually, a little bit right there. So I might slide the opacity back down so I can go back and see that and fix it. Um, bring it back up again and again decide if the colors look like they look good with the original photo or if I might need to adjust and change a few things. If at any point you make a mistake, you can click your eraser button over here and you can actually press and hold and you can erase things as well. So if something goes outside the lines where you don't want it to go or anything like that, you can use that eraser tool to sort of trim up and touch up any mistakes that you might find. So when you think you're totally done coloring, that's the last thing you're going to do is you're going to kind of hover around, maybe zoom in, hover around, look at all of your edges, see if there's things that you can fix or change. Um, when you want to fix or change something, always, always, always double check what layer you're using. So if you're fixing something that's for your face and your hair and your body, you want to make sure you're on the color layer. If you're fixing the background, you want to click that one. Um, if you are trying to fix an outline, you want to go to the outline layer. So just always make sure you're looking at your layers. It's easy to forget. So look off to the side, make sure you're doing it the right way. Um, when you're ready, go back to yourself. And again, make sure your opacity is all the way up to 100 so you can fully see what your finished work looks like. Once you've finally finished your portrait, your half cartoon, half photograph um, piece of artwork, it is time to save it permanently. We're going to go over to File. We're going to go back to Save As. And you're going to see the default is still the Photoshop. This time we don't want to save it as a Photoshop item because we want to be able to open it anywhere with any program on any computer. So we're going to switch this. So instead of it saying Photoshop, scroll down until you see the first JPEG. Um, the one that just says JPEG, not JPEG uh, 2000, JPEG stereo, just regular JPEG. You could save it as a number of other things, but this is the most widely accepted one. So we're just going to save it as that. Under file name, we're going to call it whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it cartoon face. Now you'll see down here it comes, it's showing that it's already been used, but that's as a Photoshop file. So it's fine to use it this way because it's going to be saved as a different file. We're going to press save. And um, this is going to pop up. Just press OK. Don't worry about anything else. Uh, leave it as is. It's totally fine. The default is usually very good. And now, um, after I exit out of this, if I go to my folder on the desktop, um, I'm going to see my Cartoon Face Photoshop version, but I'm also going to see the actual photo, which I can now use this to upload to my Google Drive so that you have access it to it anywhere. So um, to get it back onto your Google Drive, it should be very familiar process, but you're going to have this folder open. 
go to your drive, open your art portfolio, go to whatever grade you're going to, and make sure that you have both open at the same time. Click on the cartoon face, drag it over to your drive, and deposit it right there. And you're going to have a copy of your actual original photo and also your cartoon face. All right, that's it. I hope you guys had fun making your cartoon uh, portrait faces with me. And I hope you learned a little bit about Photoshop and about color and about how to be a little bit more expressive with yourself in this fun digital form. Have fun.